next on Good Taste. I can tell this is gonna be good. The satisfaction and struggle of keeping a family's restaurant dream alive. You're gonna make me cry now. Then, where can you find the best Rita in the state? This is actually one of the best margaritas that I've had. We'll show you who makes one mean margarita. Plus, are you eating that good? All righty. Bring your appetite to the deli of all delis. I mean, you don't know what you're missing. Good Taste starts right now. Everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. Ready for a road trip? We're headed to a mystical place some might call the land of chilies, well beyond the West Texas high plains and into New Mexico. It's an enchanting place filled with romance, love, and delicious bites of Tex-Mex delights. wide open space where West Texas meets Eastern New Mexico. Irma Leal is a living legend. You're a rock star here. That was such a <laughs> nice welcome. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Leal's offers no shortage of mouth-watering options, like the Supreme Chicken, topped on a bed of rice under a cozy blanket of cheese and the fajita laura that wraps tender meat up tight in homemade tortillas coated in queso. Because who doesn't love queso? Yeah. Or try the crispy relleno dish. This truly is one of the best chili rellenos I've ever had. It combines brisket and a chicken fried chili relleno, all smothered in white green chili queso. It's a Tex-Mex experience like no other. Leal's began as a love story. Jesse and Irma grew up across the street from each other. They fell in love when Irma was working in her parents' tortilleria. It's been a family affair ever since. We got married in November the 24th of 1955, and I grew up making tortillas in Mercedes. I was used to having fresh tortillas for every meal. So then I got to West Texas and um, I said, if I only had a little meal like Daddy had back home, that gave me the idea to have a little business on the side. Making tortillas, right? Making tortillas. <laughs> Irma and Jesse's passion for home cooking was passed on to their six children. They worked together and it was just a beautiful life and we were so blessed to get to grow up in the business and watch them work. How often do you all get together? A better question is how often do we get apart? <laughs> the Liao's old school family recipes have made loyal customers of all who come around. We've been coming here since August of 1986. It's just like family and the food's great and the service is awesome. We come here all the time. It's like eating at home, but Laura cooked it, so. I always get the enchiladas. It's my favorite. You can't go wrong. People will come with us and they always say, well, what should I order? And I said, just close your eyes and point. You can't go wrong. I've got my eyes set on Leal's famous hand-battered chili rellenos. We've always used the Anaheim chilies that we get from the New Mexico region, mostly around Hatch. They're big. This grill is a grill mom uses in her home to roast tomatoes and jalapenos to make homemade salsa at the house. Lots of love on that grill, right? Yes, Absolutely. a lot of love. She's an awesome cook, so I'm so happy that we were able to learn from her. Having a nice grill like this where you can raise the chilies off the flame is really important. Also, it's very important that you poke just a small little hole in there. That relieves the pressure and it keeps ah, them from exploding. Yes. I learned something on that one. Yeah. So now we got them all nice and roasted and smooth and, and tender. You yes. peel them. That little slit you put in them so that they don't explode while you're roasting them. So that's a good place that it's already ready to go and you just stuff, stuff it just like that. Oh, look at that. Yes. I've never seen anyone do the slit and drop the cheese in whole. I've always seen the grated cheese go yeah. in. I love that. This is While those chilies get golden, it's time to get saucy. The good stuff, right? Yes, this is 
You don't find this Hispaniola sauce in too many places. Ching ching. Ching ching, these are the best. Salud. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got it down, girl. That's good. We do everything with love and with all our heart. I'm real proud. I'm real proud of, of, of all my kids. Laura, what have you learned from your mom? You're, as you know, so blessed to still get to work together. I'm told you're retired, but that you're not really. Yeah. <laughs> Strength and determination and um, never giving up. Yeah, you told me when we first talked that your mom was really someone you like to talk to. Yes, we talked. You're going to make me cry now yeah. about there's a lot of people in, in this business that are having tough times. How have you gotten through it? <clears throat> um, just thinking about how mom never gave up and uh, how to take everything a day at a time. In spite of all this that we're going through with COVID-19 and everything that changes from week to week, I still think that we don't even have it as hard as they did because they started in a tin metal building that had no insulation and for them to get in there and start those tortilla machines they had to break ice in the winter and they had to work in 120 degree weather in the summer and so when I think about how hard it is and I go to mom's and I can't tell you how many times she tells me not to give up so I do it in honor of what we were taught and because this is what I know well, here's to another half century and more. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Goya Kitchens. We are doing the social distance thing. Our executive chef, Fernando Deza, is coming to us from near New York City, and we are making the simplest, most delicious no-bake cake ever. Right, Fernando? That's true, Tanya. We're making a Mexican Lime Maria Icebox Cake that is delicious. And it's foolproof. You're going to show me what to do and I'll follow your instructions. Super easy. To start, we're gonna get the cream cheese. Then we're gonna add the lime zest, fresh lime zest. Lime zest goes in. We're gonna add the Goya condensed milk. And I'm whisking it together. Then we're gonna add the Goya evaporated milk. I think we've got pretty good mixture going here. When everything is well mixed, we're gonna add the lime juice. Oh, the smell is fantastic. Once you have that, then you put the Maria cookies, depending on the size of the, of the pan you're using. Then we're gonna put some of the mixture on top of it. And so we just continue this until we have several layers here, right? Right, depending how much butter you have and how big the pan is. So now I've got my layers, but what do I do next? We're gonna cover it up, put it in the fridge, and we're gonna let it there for eight hours. Okay, Fernando, so we've got our lime zest on top. It looks fantastic. We even added a little mint for garnish. Good, right? Really good. It's light. The cookies turn into cake. So good, Cheers. so soft, so creamy, so refreshing. We've got the recipe online. Fernando, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, you might want to have what she's having. It's like better than any New York deli. But first, it's a hunt for the best margaritas in Texas. Is that not, is, phenomenal. is phenomenal. We're pouring one for you next. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. If there's one thing we love at Good Taste, it's a good margarita. We've sipped on plenty over the years, and we find that our favorites have a little something extra in them. Could be a little extra tequila. It's standing room only at one of the busiest new bistros in Houston. Arriba. Calle Once is a trendy oasis nestled inside one of H-Town's hippest neighborhoods. Calle Once lures in the locals with one of the largest collections of agave and rare mezcals in the state. The bar is very high here. Very, very, very high. Very high, and we, we told them we can't mediocre or anything. We, we have to hit a home run or not do it at all. They've scored a home run all right, especially when it comes to their house-made margaritas, juiced up with charred lime. This is actually one of the best margaritas that I've had, and I love margaritas. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> this tamarind margarita knocks it right out of the park, made with mezcal and a bit of elbow grease. You want me to shake it? I'm gonna shake it hard. Do a little bit harder. Harder than that? You wanted to freeze a little bit, so. Okay, well wait a minute. There's a reason you can do it harder <laughs> right. than I can. 
that is one good margarita. Thank you, thank you. So sip some mezcal and soak in all the magic of Mexico at Calle Once. Next stop, San Antonio, for one of the strongest margaritas I've ever had. One part fresh squeezed lime juice, one part triple sec, and one part tequila. That's a lot of tequila. <laughs> that, my friends, is a chispa, one of the Alamo City's most popular margaritas. That iconic creation, some say the strongest margarita in town, comes from none other than the Cavillo family at El Mirasol. They have great margaritas. Those mesmerizing margaritas are all delivered in a sleek, tropical setting. If you want like a classy Mexican dinner and a really strong margarita, <laughs> come here. That's how a margarita should taste. Last up, Lubbock, for a cocktail called the Millionaire Margarita. With a name like that, you know it's good. The authentic food served up at Picoso's Mexican Kitchen in Lubbock is out of this world. So I like it, I love it, it's real good taste. The margaritas are pretty amazing too. Don't miss the Millionaire Margarita. Delicious, it's very smooth. Made with Primo liquors, served in a crystal glass. Is, it not, is, is it not phenomenal? It it's truly not. is. It really may be the best I've ever had. It's all perfectly paired with a rustic, trendy vibe. Edison light bulbs, leather, wood, and abstract art. We're a, a fresh juice program, craft bar, and scratch kitchen, so we're really proud of that. With scratch-made margaritas like these, you'll walk away from Picoso's feeling good all over. Comfort food never goes out of style, and maybe this year or more than others, we're eating it even more. And I am at the place for the best comfort food, and I am with one of Houston's true superstars in the culinary world, but he's also one of the biggest hearts I know, Ronnie Killen. And we're at your new restaurant. Congratulations. Oh, we thank you very much. This is in the Heights. It's very special to me because it's all about my family and it's what inspired me to become a chef. So it's very dear to me. Killens is famous for fresh ingredients in this scratch kitchen. We have no freezers and everything's fresh. And I think that fresh product, only you can mess it up. <laughs> well, and, and you don't do that, <laughs> chef. We try, we try. <laughs> I have yet to find a dish you've messed up. And we're making, this is kind of fun. It's not your mama's meatloaf. Yeah, it's just ground chuck. We just ground it up. After Ronnie seasons with a little salt, he adds some simple extras for flavor, like a bit of onion, bell pepper, and a little Worcestershire. To me, it kind of gives it that umami flavor uh, with beef, and it just you know tastes really good. A little raw egg helps bind the meatloaf together, along with some crushed saltine crackers. And then just take it, mix it up, get, get mixed in there. Nothing like getting in there with your hands, right? Oh, absolutely. That's what's fun, just kind of, you know, mixing it. And the nice thing about meatloaf is it's good the next day and the next day. A cold meatloaf sandwich the next day is yeah. always great. And then comes another layer of flavor, ketchup. You can put tomato paste. We put ketchup because I just like the acid, the little touch of sweetness that comes with it. And then you put it in the oven, normally 45 minutes. You don't want to overcook it because you don't want it dry. And look, as you can see, it's a meal in itself. And because it's beef, I mean, it's protein, it's lots of Absolutely. nutrients in there. I mean, it's perfect. Look at the juices on this. Hmm. You can tell it's going to be good. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. That is fantastic, truly. And with other comfort choices, like this massive Texas-sized 16-ounce chicken fried steak, there's a lot to love at this table. 16 ounce. It's a big, it's a big chicken <laughs> bread steak, and that's enough for a family of four. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Exactly. But back to that meatloaf. You just can't beat it. It is delicious. It's so simple, so easy to make. There's so much flavor in the running. You can taste the beef, you can taste you know, that's what's about. Mm. It is delicious. Mm. The good news keeps coming. We get the recipe, right? Absolutely. We'll have it at Good Taste TV. Thank you. What <laughs> My a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Coming up, more Divine Wines in my wine finds. But next, we really hope you're hungry. Want some? 
This is awesome. There's an order for you coming right up. We'd love to share good taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all of our episodes right here. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. That's Ziggy Gruber. I mean, you don't know what you're missing. He's larger than life. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. The one thing about Jewish cooking is it's peasant food and it's simplistic. But he's okay, simply so. known as the deli man. Well, it's one of our favorite places to eat deli. Serving up authentic old world deli dining in the Bayou City at Kenny and Ziggy's. Want some? This is awesome. This is the Zeligabetsky, the sandwich that's bigger than its name. It's big, all right. Named for Ziggy's memory of the Yiddish folk tales his grandfather told. Eight layers of Russian dressing, coleslaw, Swiss cheese, beef tongue, turkey pastrami, salami, roast beef, pastrami, corned beef, and sweet red peppers, all sandwiched on house-made double-baked rye bread. Who would we know that's eaten one of these? Shaquille O'Neal has eaten two of these at one sitting. Are you eating that good? <laughs> All righty. Don't miss the delectable desserts, baked fresh every day. It's all served with heaping helpings of love. I'm third generation in the delicatessen restaurant business. Um, I fell in love with it because it was a family affair. My, my grandfather, who I loved and adored, I saw him every day at the store. And at eight years old, he threw an apron at me and he says, it's time for you to make a living. I've been cooking in the kitchen ever since. All right, enjoy. They make stuff here that my grandmother used to make. Ziggy's Hungarian goulash is loaded with tender beef, stewed in a rich and savory tomato sauce, with paprika, garlic, onions, celery, and carrots, served over homemade egg noodles. <laughs> This Romanian steak is a 24-ounce grilled gem, marinated in olive oil, onions, and garlic for two days, then charbroiled over an open flame, served alongside a noodle kugel. If anyone would leave my restaurant and they were still hungry, I would never forgive myself. <laughs> but make sure to save room for those heavenly blenses. It took me 20 years to get this recipe down perfect. So the key to start with is the right batter, right? You need this. Now, that's, that's what the secret is. These coveted crepes are filled with a sweet blend of farmer's cheese, vanilla, sugar, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Then the folding begins. Look how beautiful her blends is. <laughs> I love it. Dressed to impress with berries and powdered sugar. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> oh, but those are so good. They are delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. My grandfather was everything to me, and I hope he looks down and he says, you know, you're doing it right, and you're doing, you're doing a good job, not just in business, but in but the way I conduct my life in general. It doesn't get any bigger or better than Kenny and Ziggy's. It's that time, time for my wine finds. At first, when you think of Bordeaux, red wines come to mind most likely, but the region makes some delicious white wines too, like this one right here. This is the Lejeune Bordeaux, a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Simeon. Pointed citrus flavors like lemon and grapefruit are rounded out by the Simeon's richness and notes of honey. This is the kind of wine where one sip begs for another. It pairs beautifully with oysters, seafood, even risotto dishes. The producer is one of the legendary houses of Bordeaux. Domaine Baron de Rothschild Le Jean is 1498 a bottle. Up next, a delightfully balanced Pinot Noir called Bread and Butter from Napa. Now this Pinot surprised me because it's lighter than what I expected from a Napa Pinot. It's layers of strawberries, then dark cherries, then earthy mushrooms, or what you'd find in a classic Pinot Noir. The bread and butter winemaker's blend, it's a keeper. 
at only $14.98 a bottle. Okay, I saved a big, bold red wine for last. Imagine marrying the sweet vanilla notes of bourbon to the bold big fruit of Zinfandel. Well, this is what you get. The Buckshack Zinfandel, aged in bourbon barrels. Jammy dark cherries, black pepper, boysenberries, just some of the flavors that leap from the glass. This is a big wine, but I'm guessing bourbon fans, you can handle it. The Buckshack Zinfandel is $24.99 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines right here at HEB. When visiting Houston, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the beautiful Royal Sinesta, right in the heart of Uptown, conveniently located near the Galleria. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you're finding a way to support your favorite restaurants. We've got a huge list online at goodtaste.tv with all kinds of patio options, dine in, dine out, you name it. As always, get social with us. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Good Taste TV. And to get all of our delicious recipes, sign up for our newsletter. They'll come right to your inbox, goodtaste.tv. We'll see you next week. Till then, cheers to good taste. Awesome.